Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to YouTube Live. It's roughly 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It's Friday. It's raining out, but it's the weekend. Life is good. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I want to, again, uh, I've done this other places, but wish all the technologists who follow us a happy Technologist Week. At 5 o'clock, Technologist Week ends, and another year. Uh, but we, you know, uh, we've always said that the key people in radiology are technologists. And if you really want to do a great job on CT, MR, ultrasound, plain film, fluoro, you name it, you need to have really good technologists. So that's something we uh, take very seriously. And uh, we have great respect for our technologists who just are the key connectivity between our patients and us. Just spectacular. I also uh, want to say that for some of us, uh, it's been a very long week. Um, this is the week, don't ask why, when you're doing cross-sectional imaging fellowships, we're looking for July 2024, so that's 20 months from now. We used to do it a certain way. We'd do interviews, then people complained they wanted a match. So we were happy to do a match, sort of happy, not really happy. But now it's this mad thing where it's a week, you interview everybody on Zoom, and then they offer the people, and then they can tell you yes or no next Monday. It's really the worst possible system anybody can create. It makes a match seem godly. No one knows anything. Um, it's just massive confusion. And we have to interview a lot of people because, you know, we have to interview a lot of people in a short period of time. So some days you're interviewing like 15 to 20 people. A tips are here at Hopkins. I give the guy credit. <laughs> he must interview 50 people. We've interviewed a lot of really good people, but I will tell you, when you interview people every 15 minutes, it's like, whoa, hard to keep track of everybody. Um, hopefully, we'll get really, really good people. That's our goal, and I think it's well worth coming to our fellowship. But the process, I think, is really difficult. I guess the uh, people the people who are going to be the fellows have a short period to make up their mind. Maybe they made up their mind before they came, but uh, you know it's a long way from now, 20 months. So it's really a challenge. There has to be a better way. I can't think that there is a worse way. I told the TIFF today we got to write a paper about it. Maybe the only way we can get this changed <laughs> is to write a paper and say it sucks. I mean, I don't know what else to say, but uh, we complain every year, but we're going to do something about it this year. So that's the first thing. Now, let's get back to the topic at hand, which is um, CT of mediastinal masses. One of the most classic applications on CT is evaluation of the mediastinum. And patients are referred for many different reasons. One is classic was a widened chest X-ray, which could be anything from lymphoma to aortic aneurysm to increase mediastinal fat. We also do the mediastinum in patients with staging, with staging lymphoma, with staging uh, lung cancer mediastinal CT is part of the chest CT. So we're doing it uh, routinely there. We also um, may have a patient with symptoms, back pain related to section, mediastinum, patient with a cough, all sorts of possibilities why you might be doing it. So let, let's talk about, think about the mediastinum. So first thing is technique. You wanna give IV contrast, scan from top to bottom, um, you want to scan as fast as possible, good breath hold. You want to time the contrast depending what you're looking at, arterial or venous. If you want everything filled, maybe go to about 70 seconds. If you want artery only, maybe go to about 30 seconds. Once in a while, we also do dual phase. And what things do you look for? Of course, one thing we'll look at, often the mediastinum is looking for dissection. Is that the cause of a wide in mediastinum? Um, that's a possibility. We also could think about vascular pathology, internal mammary artery aneurysms, or other things that involve the anterior mediastinum or vessels, including the SVC, a nominant vein, and collateral vessels. But let's, for, for argument, leave those vascular stuff off right now, and let's talk about mediastinal masses more in the tumors. So we talk about anterior, middle, and posterior mediastinum, and different tumors can occur in each zone, though some tumors, think of lymphoma, can be anterior, middle, or posterior mediastinum. Some are typically anterior, think uh, thymoma, teratoma, thumb and middle mediastinum, think bronchogenic cyst. 
some of the posterior mastitis, typically think neurogenic tumors. So when we look at a mass, we kind of know location, we know history. Younger patients, you could think of different things compared to older patients. What do we look at? Well, remember when you talk about the anterior mediastinum, you were taught as a resident three T's in L, thyroid, thymoma, teratoma, lymphoma. Lots of other things exist there, but that's a good place to start. We talk about how the mass looks. Is it solid or cystic or in between? Does it have calcifications? Does it have fat? Does it enhance? Is there any neovascularity present? All of those things are typical things we look at. We want to know also, is it extending downward? Could it be substernal extension of the thyroid gland, which can create large masses? You can also have masses, though not the greatest location, for a ectopic parathyroid, smaller, typically hypervascular. In the anterior metastinum, we look at lymphoma. Infiltrating can be nodal disease or infiltrating. Commonly also will involve middle metastinum. Can be extensive. We look at lung cancer, typically nodes, you see a lung mass, you see also hyalur disease. We talk about other primary tumors, teratoma, large eccentric mass, often cystic, often with fat, often with calcifications, often solid, or a mixture of all those tissues. Often a younger patient, often eccentric, but not perfect. We talk about thymoma, can be related to myasthenia gravis, or it may not be. The thymus sits in the anterior metastinum and involutes over time. Over age 25, when you see a reasonable thigh thymus, it's probably abnormal. There's probably thymic hyperplasia. Thymic hyperplasia can be done by a number of things, but when you see a prominent thymus, you always want to worry about myasthenia gravis. That's a possibility. We talk about thymic tumors, not very vascular, but they can be infiltrating. CT is not the best way most of the time for telling malignant from non-malignant thymomas, but it can be helpful if you see direct invasion posteriorly. Thymomas are eccentric. They can implant downward. They can implant on the pleural surfaces. Teratoma, I mentioned, contains fat, contains calcification, somewhat cystic, younger patient, typically very large. Um, what other things could be there? Adenopathy from metastatic disease, metastatic lung cancer metastatic renal cell. Unusual things like Castleman's disease can cause things. And there's a range of possibilities. Middle metastinum, you can think about lymphoma, adenopathy, but you also could consider things like bronchogenic cysts as a definite possibility. Posterior metastinum, lymphoma, but also things that involve the neural canal, neurofibromas, neuroblastoma, anything along the neural uh, course in the posterior mediastinum, you can think about it. You can think about bone tumors, myeloma, plasmacytoma, things like that, METs that can present like mediastinal masses, particularly on a chest X-ray, if you don't have a lateral view. So we're thinking about those type of tumors just as well. Again, thinking about that. We also could think about other strange things in the posterior mediastinum. Extramedullary hematopoiesis would be one of them. Soft tissue infiltration around the aorta, in a patient with Ehrenheim chest disease, which can simulate the look of lymphoma. We also talk about varices, particularly lower portion of the chest. Uh, you have varices in patients with cirrhosis, portal hypertension, large esophageal varices, which particularly in arterial phase imaging, if they're not enhancing, can simulate adenopathy. And we've seen that mistake, and we've described that mistake in the abdomen and uh, as well as in the chest. We also can talk about unusual things, Castleman's disease, adenopathy that's vascular. We could talk about adenopathy that's vascular, metastasis. Mets can go to the anterior metastinum, middle metastinum, posterior metastinum. Think melanoma, think, terror, think um, seminoma, think renal cell carcinoma are all good possibilities. We're talking about benign lesions, bronchogenic cysts, subcarinal region, right paratracheal zone. Talking about pericardial cysts, but Excuse me, those are eccentric, but typically right to anterior pericardiac space. It's the most common thing to see there. Um, what else can we talk about? We could talk about, you know, analysis of relationships, like in the posterior metastinum. Is there bone involvement? Is there a mass coming out of the foramen? Is it infiltrating? Is it soft tissue density? We think about extramedullary hematopoiesis. Sometimes scans through the upper abdomen can tell you about the spleen and liver, and that may help you reach a differential diagnosis. 
So I think there's many things you indeed can look at in the mediastinum. Again, uh, from a protocol perspective, IV contrast is ideal. Coronals and sagittals are indeed very helpful. 3D imaging can be very helpful. Again, particularly when you're having invasive processes in relationship to vessels is important. Whether or not you can do surgery, those cases really do benefit from 3D mapping and multiplanar uh, reconstructions. So a lot of things to think about. Again, there's a range of appearances of thymoma, a range of appearances of teratoma, a range of appearances of lymphoma. So you go to CTSS, look at the case file. You can see lots of cases. Look online, look at um, Instagram. You can see lots of cases. There's different places you can look. When you see a lot of cases, you kind of recognize the patterns that are involved. Yes, there's always something strange. A Castleman's, for example, would be strange. But the typical things are typical. What are you on? What are you on? Again, three T's in L, anterior mediastinum, posterior mediastinum, neurogenic, middle, bronchogenic. Again, think about those things. Look at the differential diagnosis. Maybe the stuff beneath the abdomen that helps you. Surely if it's metastatic disease, surely if it's varices, surely a humongous spleen makes you think about extra basal hematopoiesis. So lots of things to think about. And it's Friday. It's 412. I gave you your 12 minutes. And now you can go home and study it. So with that, I see we have some hellos. Sino de Lazar, who's from Iran. I don't know where in Iran, but we say hi. And it's amazing how many people we have from Iran. Uh, I, I'm glad that they let CT as us and uh, YouTube live into Iran. And again, for everybody, I said it at the beginning, I'll say it at the end. We wish everybody a great weekend, a great, happy Radiology Technologist Week. And again, we take this moment to thank all of our techs for doing a great job. And thank you, our audience, for showing up as always, five o'clock or no five o'clock. Um, have a great day. Now, I know Iran's in the Middle East. Hey, you know, uh, Sina, I, I, I'm pretty good at geography. Not great, but I kind of know the, the big picture of things. And geography is very much like anatomy. Right? There's anatomy, relationships, things affect other things. So it's kind of very much like that. But anyway, whether you're in Iran or you're in Baltimore, any place in the Middle East, any place in East Baltimore, which is where we are, any place in West Baltimore, North Baltimore, wherever you are, have a great weekend. And uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, guys.